Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to turn some music on here. Hang on one sec. There we go. We're going to start the timer because I always forget to do that. Okay. So, the last time that we played Time Zone from 1982, Roberta Williams and Sierra Online, <clears throat> it crashed on us. So, I think it's working again. I played around with it a little bit over the last week and it seems to be okay. Um... I want to say hi to Keena, Sarah Best, Scoop Joey, Shy Smile, Scoop Jessica. I think that's everybody that's in there right now. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, we're going to continue playing Time Zone. We're going to go from our save state from last week and see if we can finish this bad boy off. Um, remember, we're here to raise money for Extra Life, although if you look at the, uh, the stream setup above me and to the side, uh, you'll notice that our totals aren't there, unfortunately. Something's screwed up on that right now, and I haven't figured out how to fix it yet. And when I say I haven't figured out how to fix it, that means that I totally lean on someone else to do it and uh, selfishly just assume that they'll fix it for me eventually. So, um, But that being said, please, please, please remember to donate to tinyurl.com slash Seward or to subscribe to the channel. All revenue on this channel, of course, is uh, donated to Extra Life. And uh, you can subscribe for free through Amazon Prime, but remember if you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you need to re-up every month. The uh, donation link is in the chat, and of course, if you donate or subscribe, you get to choose a game from the donor request list, which I've also linked in the chat right now. Um, it does mean Vanna, Cerebes. And uh, yeah, you pick a game for me to play on th an upcoming Thursday night. Things got weird at your Airbnb in Maine, Keenad. Okay, so hopefully the audio is okay. Let me know if it's too loud, if it's too low, if you guys can hear the nice soothing music we have going here. And we are going to head back to Australia in 1700 AD. Here we go. Let's see if this works. We're going to exit our time machine, which means we need to put in a new disk. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And let's see how this works. Wow, Keenad, that's uh, interesting. I don't think I'm going to repeat that on the stream. All right, and we are in a meadow. There's a time machine here, and it appears to be... Pulsated, kind of like Keenad's Airbnb in Maine. All right, um, we're gonna go west. You're in a green meadow. You see sheep in the distance at an Airbnb in Maine. We're gonna go north. Oh no! Oh no! It's doing it again. No. Alright, we're gonna try this again. It's not the wrong disc. Come on, baby, you can do it. I swear to God, this was working the other night. Okay, I'm gonna try saving here again. Let's go west again. It's the sheep, those damn sheep. North. Nope. All right, well, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. Give me a minute here. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fix this. And by fix this I mean we're moving on to our next game. So uh, give me one second, we'll do some updates here. You're gonna love this. I'm gonna love this. I hope it works. See I thought this might happen, so I got my next game ready just in case. We are going to go to the Dark Crystal.
It takes a while to boot up, though. And of course, this is based on the movie, the, the, the Jim Henson film. Uh, let's see here, make sure I'm in the right place. It's too bad that uh, Time Zone doesn't want to work for us. But oh well. Let's see if the Dark Crystal will work for us. But it takes a while to load up. So let's, let's, let's hang, let's chat, let's talk. What's going on? What's happening, y'all? So anyway, um, worth noting that uh, Time Zone was a flop. Um, it uh, it seems like it um, just did not work for people. So they went much simpler with the Dark Crystal. They went sort of back to to what? Uh, oh, you see, look at that Sierra Online. Ah, part of the Sierra Adventure series. The Dark Crystal. That's pretty great. I didn't even know that the movie was based on a book, Sarah Bess. So this was uh, the first licensed game for Sierra. Um, it was also released in a easier version called the Gelfling Adventure, which wasn't as open-ended, I believe. Um, uh, and that was actually published, or sorry, developed by Al Lowe, who of course went on to do the Leisure Suit Larry games, which we will be playing uh, eventually in this series. I totally didn't know that service. I feel like I'm gonna. Are they good books? Did have you? I assume you've read them. Scoop Jessica, are you going to remind me to take some screenshots here for uh, the thumbnails? If this ever loads, this is taking forever. While we wait, open up the snipping tool. Come on, it's loaded for me earlier. Service. I had no idea about any of that. So, the from the Chronicles of Prydain, Prydain, and I had no idea that the second book was the Black Cauldron. Come on, baby, load. I can't wait to get out of the Apple two days. There we go. Side B. Disc one, side B. All right, let's see if this works better than time zone. And we're off. There he is. Jen is in a beautiful mountain valley. The mystics have a special name for it, the Valley of the Stones. Ah, back in my play. I love a good episode of Back in My Play. All right, we're gonna we're gonna look. Cool. It's one of the mystics. Before Jen can act, a mystic approaches and says, Ursu, wisest of our race, is dying. He is sent for you. Come quickly. And then the mystic walks away. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones. We're going to move east.
Wow, Keenan, the Dark Crystal for the first time. It's a great movie. Jan is standing on a mountainside covered with loose and extremely sharp shale. Say that seven times fast. We're going to get some of that shale. Hopefully we don't cut ourselves. Okay. Jen is in the mountains. We're going to move west again. Oh, we didn't move west before. Uh, okay. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones. We're going to move west for a second time. Very cool. I like that. That's beautiful compared to what we've been seeing. Jenison in the Valley of the Stones is so named for the circular formations of standing stones that lie within it. I think we're going to take a quick uh, screen grab of this. Might be a good thumbnail, right? And Jessica, you read my mind. Must be the promise of that coffee crisp. Uh, we're going to go west for a third time. Yes, I do like that you see your character in every scene. Chen is in the Valley of the Stones. Towering above him to the west is a steep cliff. A cave opening beckons from the side of the cliff. We're going to go west again. Can you guys hear that music, by the way? Cool, look at that. I'm really digging the art in this so far. Jen is slowly walking within a dimly lit cave. The passage winds to the north and to the east. All right. I'm going to go north. Jen is in a large candlelit cavern. Ursu, wisest of the mystics, lies here dying. Beside him on the floor is a bowl of liquid. All right, we're going to talk to Ursu. Wow. Ursu sighs and says, At the time of the last conjunction, or coming together, of our world's three sons, the evil Skeksis gained control of the great crystal that rules our destiny. The crystal cracked and darkened, and dark it will remain until the peace that broke off, the crystal shard, is restored. There is a prophecy that the shard can be replaced only by a gelfling hand, and only at the time of the next great conjunction. If this prophecy is not fulfilled, the Skeksis will grow even more powerful, and their reign will last forever. Jen, to you, has fallen the task of healing the crystal, and it is time for your quest to begin. For very soon, the three sons will once again be joined in a great conjunction. You must find Agra, keeper of the secrets, of secrets and watcher of the heavens. She may have the shard you seek. Oh my god, it's still going. Gelfling, I leave you with this final puzzle. What do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Find the answer to this mystery and present it to Agra. Only then can you gain entrance to her observatory. And now, Gelfling, our roads must curve apart. We may meet in another life, but not again in this one. With these words, Ursu dies, and his lifeless body vanishes from the sleep frame. Story time with Greg, that's right. Well, Jan is still smiling. He's in a large cavern. Okay, we're leaving. South. In a cave passage, we're going to go east. Hey, Mook. I should sit in a chair, chair under a spotlight. That would work for this. That's what I need is just a lamp that hangs over me. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones. Okay, so we're going to go east again. This is a great image. I love this image. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones. I think it's interesting. Oh, never mind. Okay, we're going to go north. Jen is making his way along a shadowy path that snakes through the hills above the Valley of the Stones. Okay. We're going to dig. 
why you would know that. Using the shale, Jen digs in the ground at the base of the tree and uncovers a strange looking flute. Jen is in the hills. I'm gonna get that flute. Fluge. Get fluge. Jen is in the hills. Didn't he just have a flute before? Or was that the girl that had the flute? I forget the female's name. I forget the female's name. Alright. We've gotten the flute. We're going to move north. Jen falls head over heels down a steep slope. Wow. Another nice image. Jen is traversing a wilderness of tangled vines, chattering blossoms, and wary creatures. It's interesting that he's not colored in. Okay, we're going to go north again. Jen is alone in the wilderness. Happily, there is a beautiful pond sparkling like a gem among the chattering flowers to brighten up Jen's loneliness. Croaking, frog-like creatures abound on huge lily pads floating on the pond. Hey, Juno. Nice to see you. Alright, we're going to cut Lily. Using the sharp shale, Jen cuts the lily pad away from its thick stem and takes it with him. Jen is in the wilderness. It's nice and cool here. Got air conditioning. Alright, we cut that lily pad. We're going to move east. Est. East. There we go. Don't you love it, Keenad? Just think, when we get into the uh, the more, well, the, the mid-80s adventure games, there won't be as much reading. There is a babbling brook splashing through the wilderness here. Chattering flowers and tall grasses line its banks. I wonder if they had to run all this text through <clears throat> the licensee. The licensor, sorry. Because this is, this text is at a different level than what it's been so far. We're going to listen to the brook. <clears throat> Jen listens carefully to the babbling brook. The brook, which seems to have a slight stutter, says e -E -N A A N and N N N. Jen is in the wilderness. I was hoping the brook was going to tell a story. Move east. So, telling us to move east three times and north twice okay so there's east once creatures scurry out of Jen's way as he walks through a wilderness of thick foliage and chattering flowers this is way more interesting to pick to look at than the endless screens of just empty meadows and forests yeah you're right Jessica they'll be, they'll be better ones when we get to like Agra and things like that uh, so that was east once. Let's go to east again. We need something that I can fit the title in, in the banner. Jen is walking on an east-west path through what seems like an endless wilderness. The sounds of the wilderness have given way to an eerie hush. East again. That was the way I used to say hush when I read Goodnight Moon to my kids, by the way. to the lady whispering hush Jen is on a path in the wilderness the plants and animals here seem strangely quiet the path hits west and north all right that means we're going north because we came from the west Jen has arrived in a swampland where the ground is mucky and vines hang everywhere from enormous trees. Go north again. Jen is at the southern edge of a vast swampland that extends for miles to the east and west. Looking far to the north, he can barely make out what might be the swamp's boundary. So we're going to use Lily. 
Floating atop the pad he cut from the water lily, Jen paddles north until he reaches a shallow portion of the swamp. As he gets off the pad, however, he forgets to grab hold of it, and it floats away, hopelessly out of reach. Jen is trudging through the northern edge of a vast swampland. Vines dangling from the huge trees hamper his every step. To his horror, Jen sees a crystal bat hovering overhead. <clears throat> its crystal eye is staring directly at him. Let's go north. Does an Agra have a unibrow? Jen is wading through a murky swampland. The trees are draped with vines and slime covers everything. Let's go east. Yeah, no, right, Scoop Joey, there's something like oddly um, calming about seeing the trees get, or the, seeing the colors get uh, filled in. Jen is in an eerie swampland. Vines have come down from the trees and wrapped themselves around him. The vines will not let go of Jen as he struggles to free himself. All right, let's look. Jen is in a near swampland. Vines have come down from the trees and wrapped themselves around him, as the vines will not let go of Jen as he struggles to free himself. So now we have to look again. Hey, giraffe. Oh, thanks for the host. And we're going to hear this again. Jen is a near... Is that a new vine up there? Jen is in a near swampland. Vines have come down from the trees and wrapped themselves around him. The vines will not let go of Jen as he struggles to free himself. I'm going to look again. And I'm not going to read that again. We're going to look one more time. Here we go. <laughs> Looking out from his vine prison, Jen finds himself returning the gaze of single eyeball thrust up among the tendrils by a withered hand. There you go. Let's talk to that hand. Talk to the hand. The hand holding the eye belongs to a strange and terrifying being. I am Agra, says the being, keeper of secrets and watcher of the heavens. Secret uh, Jen is in a swampland, in case you forgot. Moon daughters? Why would I know that? Okay. Very good, cackles Agra. Oh, is the answer to the riddle. She orders the vines to let go of Chen. It's not a great image of Agra right now. I'm not going to take that one. I'm going to look at her now. Before Jen can even catch his breath, Agra goes north to her observatory. Jen, sensing that something important is about to happen, follows close behind. Jen is in the observatory of Agra, watcher of the heavens and keeper of secrets. Agra turns to Jen and says, what you want? This is awesome. Uh, I want a shard. Agra cackles. That all? Why not say so? She sets four shards on the table, a blue one, a green one, a violet one, and an orange one. I never could figure out which shard belonged to Crystal, Agra says. Maybe you... maybe you can. Only can take one shard with you. Though, sorry. And once you pick, not allowed to change mind, so choose carefully. Just waiting for that last one. Jen is in Agra's observatory. Um, play flute. Flute issues a strange two-toned chord. The blue shard begins to glow and sounds the same chord back. I don't I have no idea what the music is keen at. It's just a, a, a playlist I have set for this stuff. Alright, so we're gonna choose the blue shard.
Jen is in Agra's observatory. Okay, go window. So I think what was supposed to happen there is that the Gartham attacked, but I, since I knew what to do, uh, I think it was supposed to happen after a few commands. Jen finds himself mired up to his knees in an eerie bog. Luckily, the shallowness of the swamp here offers him at least the possibility of escape. So yeah, I skipped a Gartham attack there, which is too bad because I wanted to see what they look like. And ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. we're going to move south. We're still in a swampland. Yes. Uh oh. Sinking to his waist, Jen has become hopelessly mired in a boggy section of the Great Swamp. With each passing moment, he slips further into the all consuming muck. Help. Jen cries, Help! The girl grabs a long branch and helps Jen out of the bog. Please insert this do side A. Please work. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the girl smiles and says, I am Kira, and this fuzzy creature is my pet, Fizgig. I thought I was the only living Gelfling, but then I guess you must have thought the same thing. Jen and Kira have entered a great forest. They are on the bank of a wide river which flows south. By the side of the river is the discarded shell of a giant beetle. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. All right, well, we're going to turn that shell. With a mighty heave, they turn over the beetle shell, exposing a small pouch, which had been hidden under the shell's hollow underside. Jen and Kira are in a forest. We're going to get that pouch. Ah, I love Fizzgig. Come on. This is great. Just in case you're wondering, Jen and Kira are still in a forest. All right, let's go south. Oh wait, no, we can't go shell. That might be a good screenshot. Jen and Kira, Jen, Kira, and Fizzgig climb into the overturned beetle shell and cast off into the current. Hang on, I'm gonna do a screenshot here. Dark crystal one. Hey. There we go. Downstream, they reach they beach the shell and make their way on foot to the pod village. Took that screenshot now, just in case it's gonna switch on me. Or crash on me, one of the two. Oh, there's that bat again with the eye. Jen and Kira have entered the pod village, the home of the gentle forest folk who have sheltered Kira since her early childhood. Yes, I heard they're making a new uh, Dark Crystal TV series. That'll be interesting. To his horror, Jen sees a crystal bat hovering overhead. Its crystal eye is staring directly at him. go south.
Jan and Kira hear a fearful, clattering sound. Before them looms Agartham, one of the menacing beetle-like warriors who serve the Skeksis. Cool. All right, um, we're gonna throw seed. When the smoke seed hits the ground, it explodes in a dense cloud of smoke, allowing Jen and Kira to make good their escape. Oh yeah, and Fisky. <clears throat> yeah, throw seed was kind of weird, right? Jen and Kira are treading through a forest that has grown here undisturbed for centuries. The silence has a soothing effect on them. Bow chicka wow wow, we're gonna move west. Uh oh. Jen and Kira stand in what remains of the pod village. There is no sign of life, and the homes of the villagers have been partially destroyed. Well, let's go west again. It's a good picture. Jen and Kira are strolling in a forest of towering trees. Birds are singing, and, cre and a creature stares at them from behind a large rock upon which a spiral has been carved. We're going west one more time. Oh, I forgot about these things. Jen and Kira are on the hill of the Landstriders. Two long-legged beasts are grazing here. Well, we're going to jump on one. Jen and Kira, still carrying her faithful pet Fizzgig, climb onto the backs of the two Landstriders. Jen and Kira are on the hill of the Landstriders. Okay, we're going to keep going west. Five times. So here's the first time. Jen and Kira are traversing a craggy brushland with low bushes and scrubby vegetation. A hot, dry wind blows over the landscape from the west. West a second time. Jen and Kira have reached the eastern edge of a deep chasm, on the far side of which lies a vast barren desert. West third time. Mook, you should see this movie. With their long legs, the Landstriders have no trouble carrying Jen, Kira, and the Fizzgate safely to the other side of the chasm. Jen and Kira are now on the west side of the treacherous chasm. An arid desert begins here and extends beyond sight to the west. We go west two more times. Jen and Kira are crossing a great desert on the backs of the land striders. The heat grows more oppressive by the minute. It's like Halifax. West one more time. Jen and Kira have entered a bleak, barren land. There is not a sign of life anywhere. The air here is still and sinister. All right, now we're gonna go south. The Gelflings are riding through a dry, parched, empty land. I'm gonna go south again. Oh, look at that, we're getting close. Jen and Kira are riding rapidly through the parched, cracked landscape. They see a hideous castle to the west. Well, you know we're going west. Uh-oh. Jen and Kira have arrived at a ravine surrounding the castle. Numerous Gartham, dread warriors of destruction, are approaching. I like that line. Dread warriors of destruction. This makes me want to watch the movie again. It's not on Netflix by any chance, is it? The Gartham attack. Jen, Kira, and Fizzgig are thrown to the ground at the edge of the ravine. One Landstrider is dead. The other is fighting a losing battle. 
but Garthim looms over the Gelflings, ready to pounce. The situation appears hopeless. We're going to jump. Please insert disc 2, side B. We are almost through this game, guys. Please don't crash. Might be a short stream tonight. Dread Warriors of Destruction throws seed. <laughs> yep, exactly. Jen and Kira, with Fizgig in her arms, are plummeting into the ravine that surrounds the castle. Amazingly, Kira spreads a pair of wings, slowing her just fall. Sorry, I lost I lost uh, sight of where that was. Well, we're going to get Kira because we don't want to die. Jen has grabbed hold of Kira, and together they are gliding slowly toward the bottom of the ravine. That's creepy. Jen and Kira, Jen, Kira, and Fizgig are at the bottom of a ravine that surrounds the castle. The ravine curves to the east and west. Before them, carved into the rock, is a stone face. Stone face Kira. Um, okay. We're released. Jen, Kira, and Fizgig are at the bottom of a ravine that surrounds the castle. The ravine curves to the east and west. Before them, carved into the rock, is a stone face. Hmm. Did I go east a minute ago? Okay, we're gonna. It's tells me. It's telling me to send Fizgig. Where does Jen want to send him? Uh, send bars. Jen and Kira send Fizgig through the bars of the gate. Fizgig has disappeared through the jaws of the stone face. Okay. Sure. Look. Before Jen can act, Fizgig comes bounding back through the bars of the gate with a key in his mouth. Jen, Kira, and Fizgig are in the ravine surrounding the castle. Okay, well, we got a key. We're gonna unlock the gate. Aww, Mr. Shy Smile, why do you hate Fizgig? Gonna open that gate. I thought I heard someone knocking. Sorry. When Jen opens the gate, the door behind it automatically swings open. Jen, Kira, and Fizgig are in the ravine surrounding the castle. Okay, we're moving south. Jen, Kira, and Fizgig are in a foul-smelling underground sewer system. Tunnels veer off to the east, west, and south. To the north is a door on which the image of a serpent chasing its tail has been painted. Man, if only one of us spoke parcel tongue, right? Yeah, he's the he's the comic relief for the film. He's the cute factor. He made it not entirely terrifying for children back in the 80s. Yeah, that is a good screenshot. You're right. We're going we're going to do that. Not on Canadian Netflix. Oh well, thanks for checking, Keynet. All right, what are we doing here? We unlocked the gate. We went south. We're going west now. Jen and Kira are walking through a sewer tunnel beneath the castle. The slime-coated tunnel runs east and south. 
All right, we went south, we went west, and we go south again. Or wouth, as I spelled it. Jen and Kira are lost in a maze of underground sewer tunnels. The tunnels here travel to the north, east, and west. All right, we're gonna go west. I'm not paying money to rent it. I, I, I have it on DVD somewhere. I just didn't want to have to dig it out. Jen, Kira, and Fizgig are in the sewer system. One passageway runs east, and strange sounds are coming from the passageway to the south. Uh, west again. Oh, look at that. We've met a Skeksis. The Chamberlain suddenly rushes in from the dark reaches of the sewers and grabs Kira and Fizgig. As he runs off with them, he touches an unseen lever. You know we're taking a screenshot of this too, right? on the tunnel wall, and a shower of boulders cascades from the ceiling. Jen is alone in the sewer system. Passage to the east has been blocked by huge boulders, and strange sounds are coming from the passageway to the south. Well, we're gonna go south. Oh man. Jen has fallen into the bottom of a huge pit, startling several sleeping Gartham. They eye him warily, then advance menacingly. It looks like Jen is in trouble. Uh, so we're going to run. Powerful claws slash toward Jen, narrowly missing the top of his head and smashing a hole in the wall beside him. Right, just like the movie. Jen is in a deep pit. And it go whole. Cool. There are too many good screenshots in this game. Jen is perched on a precarious ledge halfway up a steep shaft. Below him is a flaming lake of fire. Floating high above him is the dark crystal. There is a ragged hole in the shaft through which fearful, clattering sounds can be heard. We're gonna climb. We're going up. Oh look, it's Agra. That's a pretty good image of Agra. Jen has climbed up the shaft into the Chamber of Life. A steep stairway leads to the east. But apparently we're not even gonna notice that Agra's there. All right, we're going to go east. See you, Agra. Jen is in a north-south hallway. There are cracks in the walls and ceiling. To the west is a passage which leads to a steeply descending stairway. So we have to go east. Jen hears the sound of footsteps approaching from the north. Let's go south then. Man, Sierra really upped its game for this. Jen is at the southern end of a filth-encrusted north-south hallway. There are doorways to the west and to the east. Jen hears the sound of footsteps approaching from the north. West. As Jen darts through the doorway, he hears a group of Skeksis coming down the hall and go into the room directly across from him. Jen is in a dank and dusty closet. There's a doorway to the east. Let's go east. Yeah, really. Let's 
we're in a hallway, we're going to go east again. Nice. Jan is standing in the doorway of the dining room. Seated at a long table near a curtain-covered wall are several Skeksis. Unaware of Jen's presence, they are arguing loudly with each other. We are almost at the end of this game. Let's get to that curtain. Jen gets behind the curtain and inches toward the Skeksis. When he is closer, he hears them arguing about a secret panel somewhere in the tower. He waits till no one is looking, then quickly he slips out from behind the curtain and leaves the room. Jan is in a hallway. Let's go north. Oh right, we couldn't go north before, could we? We are still in a hallway. We're going north again. Jan is at a junction of hallways, one running east and west, the other running south. Signs of filth and decay are everywhere. I like how they keep saying that, because that was like a big big point in the movie, was that the, the, their castle was falling apart. We're going to go west. There's a scepter here. Jen has wandered into the throne room. A large throne sits amid the filth that coats the deserted chamber. Let me get that scepter. We're in the throne room. Okay. We're gonna move east. We're in the hallway. We're gonna move east again. Jen has reached the east end of an east-west passage. Through a doorway at the end of the passage, he can see a narrow ramp winding its way upward. Well, let's go. Jen is standing on the rotting floor of a deserted tower. From here, a narrow ramp winds down to the hallway below. We're going to use hook. Using the hook at the end of the scepter, Jen pulls on the latch and the secret panel opens. Jen is in a tower of the castle. Okay, we're going to go east. Jen is at the bottom of a narrow stairway. Gazing upward, he is seized by a feeling of grave apprehension. There is an opening in the wall to the west. I'm going to go up. Jen has reached the top of the narrow stairway. Strange noises are coming through an open doorway to the east. East, baby! Cool. Yeah, we're taking that. Jen is on a balcony high above the crystal chamber, but now he's going to stop to take a screenshot. Save as... It's also followed the movie very, very uh, um, faithfully. It's pretty impressive. All right, we'll start reading again. Sorry to story to uh, interrupt story time. Jen is on a balcony high above the crystal chamber. The Skeksis have gathered in a circle beneath the dark crystal. Their power ceremony, timed to coincide with the Great Conjunction, is beginning. Kira and Fizgig are with the Skeksis. That's true. You, you're you're seeing the movie at this point. Okay, we're gonna jump onto that crystal, just like in the movie. Oh wow, this might be the screenshot. This is the screenshot right here. 
forget that last one. Ah, Keenan, thanks. You guys are so nice. That's pretty fantastic. Jen has landed atop the Dark Crystal, but the impact has caused him to drop the shard, which now lies precariously on the brink of the shaft beneath the crystal. Jen looks up through an open portal in the ceiling. The three suns are touching. Quickly, Kira picks up the crystal shard. She is about to throw it up to Jen, but the ritual master, drawn dagger in hand, warns her, Give me the shard, Gelfling, and you go in peace. Otherwise, no choice but to kill you. Does Jen want to save Kira? Wow, this is, this is a terrible choice. But no, we're not saving Kira. Alf is back in pog form. Jen sits astride the crystal. Kira has thrown the shard up to him, and he holds it in his hand. The edges of the three suns are overlapping. We're going to use that shard. I wonder if it's going to show images of the ending, or if it's just going to be a big screen of text. As the three suns become one, and a flood of blinding light washes over him, Jen plunges the shard deep into the wound in the crystal. Hey look, there's the beings. Jen has healed the wound in the crystal, and restored it to its original brilliance. He is now on the floor of the crystal chamber, which is bathed in brilliance. Oh, bathed in radiant light, sorry. The Gartham are cracking and falling apart. The filthy walls of the castle are crumbling, revealing its original crystalline purity and beauty. The evil reign of the Skeksis is over. However, Kira, stabbed at the moment of the Great Conjunction, lies in Jen's arms. The Gelfling sobs uncontrollably as he cradles her lifeless body. And yeah, we're gonna. This is gonna be a fairy tale ending, of course. When Jen kisses Kira, she opens her eyes, and the life that the Skeksis took from her before Jen healed, the crystal has rekindled. Finally, the two the Gelflings and all creatures can live peacefully together in a world to which harmony after a thousand years of darkness, has been restored. Thank you for playing the Dark Crystal. Boy, that was easier than Time Zone. <laughs> that is one happy fizz gig. I'm telling you. I tell you what. Alright, well you know what that means. That means... We might need to play some King's Quest, because King's Quest is the next game on the list. But I'm not using an FAQ for King's Quest. And I'm going to have to try to... Let's see what we can do here. Hang on one sec. This is pretty uh, great music for this ending screen, right? Alright, let's see if I can get King's Quest running here. All right, what we're going to do, I'm going to update all this stuff real quick. What year is this? So that was pretty good, right? That was way better than uh, Time Zone, anyway. The music has been weirdly perfect tonight. I think I'm going to turn it off, though, after this. 
because we want to be able to hear the music from uh, King's Quest. That's not the King's Quest I want. I guess it is. Alright, we're going to kill this emulator. We're going to kill the music. And we're going to turn on King's Quest. But it's full screen, and I can't make it stop. <laughs> we'll figure this out. Hang on one second here. Hey, Mook. Yeah, I did catch the German Grand Prix, and I'll tell you... It was great, but uh, I don't think they should have let. Um, I don't think they should have been okay with uh, Hamilton going past the Bollard to enter to enter the pits and then not have to worry about it. Yeah, it's DOSBox. I don't know how to make it uh, play windowed. Settings. Do you know what the command switch is? DOS box. Alt GR? What's a GR? Alt G. Alt G? Let's try it. Let's see here. Play. That didn't work. Yeah, well, that's just it, Mook. It was completely, uh, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really not happy with that. Um, sorry guys, I'm, I'm sorry that this is, uh, this is taking a minute. Um, we're rapidly running out of time here. Try throw seed. Um, I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to turn the music back on while we're figuring this out. Hey, Closet Ninja. Alt Enter? Let's try it. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now, now I just need to get it working on here. Uh, we're going to capture. We're getting there. We're getting there. There we go. Look at that. We've got it. Exciting times. We're playing King's Quest. So yeah, this is uh, the first, uh, what was it called? The Graphic Adventure Interface or Adventure AGI, Adventure Game Interface. This is the first Adventure Game Interface game. 
from Sierra, 1984. And this is what everything's going to look like for the next 10 years. It's the castle of King Edward the Benevolent. Open that door. We're gonna open it. The huge doors swing open slowly. Did you guys even hear that audio? I'm gonna turn that way up. Look, hallway. I don't understand hallway. Look, knights. To understand knights, look, armor. This is the armor of one of King Edward's knights from years ago. But you don't understand knights, so that's cool. And like I said, I would leave the music playing, except this. Hey, it's the king. Except that, uh, oh, I do have one point. Look at that. Except that there's music in these games. So, okay, we're going to look king. King Edward the Benevolent is very wise, but elderly monarch. His frail body is almost lost in the large throne. Uh, we're going to bow, obviously. Lovely little uh, effect there where his hat falls off. When you bow to King Edward, his pleased smile warms you. Talk king. Oh my goodness, here we go. The pointer's bugging me. When you speak to King Edward, he sighs and says, Sir Graham, I'm an old man. I fear my end is near. I have chosen you to prove yourself worthy of the throne. As you know, our kingdom is weak and poor. I have knowledge of the existence of three things that would make our kingdom wealthy and strong. Somewhere within our kingdom, there is a magic mirror that tells the future. There is a magic shield that will protect the bearer from mortal harm. Finally, there is a magic chest that is always filled with gold coins. Go, Sir Graham. Go and bring me back these treasures. If you succeed, you will inherit the throne. And then the king said, press any key to continue. Well, RJ, they just said that they're, they're uh, poor. He doesn't have money for any of that stuff. Okay, uh, let's go out into, the, into Daventry and see what's up. Oh, we got four points now. The knights quit due to lack of payroll. I love it. Stop. Okay, you know what we're going to save? Um, I'm going to... First, do this, escape, save that bad boy. Um, adventure Knight. Wait a minute. Adventure Knight. <laughs> All right. Oh, I hate that pointer so much. All right. So yeah, like the thing with these early um, AGI games is that like it looks like Graham should go up and over this bridge because that's the way the art is made, but he'll just walk straight off of it. So you have to adjust for the art all the time. Okay, so just so you know, now that we're into these AGI games, I'm not planning on using FAQs if at all possible because I just don't want to. So uh, please help me out here if you know these games. And uh, yeah, I know that there's something under this rock. And I know if I push it, I'm probably going to die. Push, put, push, wow, push rock. With a heave and a hoe, you manage to move the rock, revealing a dark hole underneath it. Now, if you push the rock from below, uh, you'll die. 
look old. There's an intricately carved dagger in the hole. Okay, good dagger. You reach to the hole and grasp the dagger, being careful not to cut yourself. Oh man, we're at 11. Should I save again? I'm going to save again. All right, and now I have no idea what to do. Pick up the jelly beans. I had a couple of those Sierra uh, hint books. Look at the tree. It's a very large oak tree with branches stretching to the sky. I see nothing special in that hole. Field. Of course you don't understand field. Look firm. Look fram. Look firm. I don't understand firm. How do you not understand firm? Let's see if I can uh, climb that tree. Good call, guys. Guys and gals. Climb tree. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. Golden egg is smooth and shiny. Here's where I fall off the branch. Here's where Die Hard jumps out the window. Get egg. Golden egg is so heavy you almost drop it. All right. I've got a golden egg. Is that one? That's not one of the three treasures, is it? I already forgot. You'll see I'm saving a lot because, of course, like they tell you in these games, save early and save often. We're at 19. We're killing it. I think I already said look fields. Yeah. Look plants. This is a well tended carrot patch. The carrots look tempting to a hungry traveler. I wonder if I take a carrot if I'll die. Let's find out. You pluck a plump orange carrot from the ground. All right. Yep. I'm going to see that a lot. Okay. Always be saving. Always be saving. You know what it takes to play Sierra games? It takes golden eggs to play Sierra games. Gentle Sir Graham, I am your fairy godmother. Your quest is indeed noble. My small part to aid you can be no bigger than this magic spell. Protective, but for a little while. Okay, I guess I'm protected right now. Watching over you, Sir Graham. Oh, I wonder if I can give the carrot to this thing. Come here, goat. Look. There we go. Look, screen. <laughs> Uh, look, lake. Beautiful little lake. Okay, great. That was useful. Yeah, I think you do need to get it to follow you somewhere. That's what it is. There's a bridge troll. Yep, you got it. Open gates. The bridge troll is south. Give carrots. Oh, come here, goat.
Goats love carrots. The old goat quickly devours yours. Now he's following me. Okay, I've got a goat. I had a goat. Where's my goat? Do I need more? Okay, I guess I need more co more carrots. This might take a while. Maybe I need to see. Did I lose points? I did lose points. That's pretty funny. Maybe I need to go find that troll first. Yeah, you might be right, Keenad. Yeah, Froyaga, it, it kept crashing. I couldn't, uh, something wrong with that disc. I already have one. Okay, so I can't carry multiple carrots. Yep, Fro Yog. It was the Jim Henson movie. Licensed game from Sierra. With an FAQ, let's wait. Did the goat disappear? Oh no! <laughs> the goat escaped. <laughs> Goat's gone. <laughs> I probably should have closed the gate. <laughs> uh... Look stump. Here you can see the stump is very old and nearly petrified. Look, log. It is but a rotted log. You best be careful, young Graham. The mystic protective spell of mine has weakened and departed. Look in trunk. Look in. Look hole. Look, trunk. Enter, trunk. What do you mean you don't understand trunk? Stump. Look, stump. Enter, stump. What did it say? You can try to go there. Enter log. Look, log. Look in log. Ah, inside the old rotted stump, you notice a small canvas pouch. Get pouch. Aged and tattered open pouch. Cautiously, you open the pouch and see many sparkling and flashing diamonds. Quickly, you close it again so as not to lose any. All right. I'm going to save again, even though we've lost our goat. Well, I mean, we're gathering stuff. It's a beautiful lake. But a pretty bit of wildflower wild wildflowers. Pick flowers. 
Would it be a shame? Really? I'd be okay with it. There's a bridge. I wish I had a goat. As you approach the bridge, a mean, ugly troll appears and refuses to let you cross his bridge. Alright, alright, get away from me. The troll demands a treasure for passage across his bridge. The troll grabs the treasure and vanishes. You see a crotchety old gnome pacing around his lean-to. Look, gnome. Did I lose? Oh, I did. The gnome is old and bent under the weight of years, but a playful wisdom still brightens his eyes. Oh, come on. Really having trouble with the word gnome. The old gnome tells you he has something that may be very useful to you. Your task is to guess his name in three guesses and his gift will be yours. Good luck. What is your first guess? Anyone know what his name is? Is it Rumpelstiltskin? That is very close, but not quite right. Did I? Sp oh, maybe I spelled it wrong. Rump. Rumpelstiltskin. What's my next guess? No, Rumpelstiltskin's not right. Hmm. <laughs> Very close, but not right. Rumpel. Still skin like that. Well, I really screwed that up. Still skin. Did it work? Try that again. Rumpel stilt skin. It's not taking it now. Really? Backwards? Rumpel stilt skin. You can guess the gnome's name, but he left you a gold key anyway. Better luck next time. Well, I got a key. I don't know. <laughs> Did they, that, is that is that all I needed? Did I just like miss out on points for that? It's a raging river filled with boulders and rapids. Goat gone, gnome not guessed. Could this possibly be worse? I want to go south and see what's down here first. Okay, so I have a key. I had diamonds. I've got a carrot. Oh, I'll bet you the goat is... Isn't there a giant or something in this game? I'll bet you that's what the goat's for. I got rid of the I got rid of the stolen diamonds. Remember? It was just Rumple. So 
I think the troll was on every bridge at first. I tried Rumpel. I tried it spelled that way, RJ. Oh, there's a four leaf clover. You know I need that. Clover is soft, yet you sets a sets sense a strange strength in it. Whew, yet you sense a strange strength in it. Oh, okay, RJ. It's a pretty big world. Oh, we're back at the farm. Okay. Still need to find my goat. Look at that. Look at the nice little tree reflected in the water. You see the mountains and trees reflected in the mirror like water. I wonder if I can get in. I'm going to save. I love that we called it Adventure Night. I bet you I'll die if I go in. Swim. There we go. We're swimming. There's really nothing there. Look stump. Look hole. It's just a hole in an empty old stump. All right, fair enough. Oh, here we go. Ooh, high up in the sky, you see a very large, friendly bird. Come here, bird. Talk bird. Bird doesn't talk much. Call bird. Grab bird. Ugh. Get bird. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't know what to do with the bird. We're gonna go in here and die. It's a pretty cool cave. Empty except for a huge boulder opposite the opening. Okay, man, I got you. Thank you. Boulder. Push boulder. Possible for you to move a boulder this large. I disagree. Anything's possible. Eat boulder. Bird's gone. Oh, I missed the goat. Hey, well. All oh, right, the bird, yeah, meat. That makes sense. Maybe goat meat. The well is deep and dark, but you can see the sky's reflection on the water. Enter bucket. After you're in the old bucket, your weight causes it to slowly descend. Uh, jump. Exit bucket. Swim. Dive. Look. Look. Bottle. 
Looks like this bottle has been here for a very long time. Gift bottle. What's that thing? Look. Um, what is that? Look. Bottom. Look item. Look. What is that thing? Somebody give me a suggestion. Is it a ruby? Look ruby? Look stone? Look well. You're at the bottom of the well. Through the plants you see what seems to be a hole in the side of the well. Not even you can hold your breath forever. The well bottom has become your eternal resting place. Look at goat in well. <laughs> <laughs> we at Sierra wish to thank you for playing King's Quest. We are very sorry that you did not succeed and hope you will fare better next time. Good luck. <laughs> it's a barrel, probably. <laughs> okay, so that was, <laughs> that was a bit of King's Quest. <laughs> I knew he was going to die eventually. Um, actually, went, I made it like almost a half an hour without dying. That's pretty good. So uh, I'm going to stop there for the night. Um, thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, too bad we didn't get to finish Time Zone tonight, but hey, we got to see all of the Dark Crystal, which is great, and we got to see a little bit of King's Quest, which we'll restart again next Monday. I'll try to do a full hour and a half of it with your help. Um, P.S. The Goat is also dead, of course. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, love doing these Adventure Night streams. Uh, tomorrow night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be playing some more Mega Man and Bass on the Super Nintendo, and on Thursday night at 9.30, we're going to be playing Persona 5, I believe, uh, for donor request night. Um, again, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for donating. Hopefully my uh, my stream setup is going to be fixed tomorrow night. According to Vanna, it will be. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope to see you all here tomorrow night. Have a great one. Good night.